Hello, my name is Mrs. Tessa Rose Mahmoudi, and today we're going to talk about flowers. We're going to talk about flower parts and their functions. Flowers are incredibly beautiful and diverse, coming in all different shapes, sizes, and colors, and textures. With all this beauty, it can sometimes get distracting from the real role of flowers, which is plant reproduction. Flowers are important for plant reproduction, including the formation of seeds and fruit. Flowers are classified in two different main parts, perfect and imperfect. Perfect flowers have both male and female parts, whereas imperfect flowers are missing male or female parts. There's two different types of imperfect flowers, and we're going to go through these. The first is monoecious, which means that that plant has male and female flowers, but they're in different locations. Dioecious plants have male, and male or female flowers on that particular plant. Let me explain what I mean. Perfect flowers have male and female parts in the same exact flower. Same location, same exact flower, male and female parts right next to each other. Whereas the imperfect plants there's two different types. Imperfect plants, we'll go over first, monoecious. Monoecious plants, will give you an example of a corn plant. This corn plant does, has two different areas where there's a flower. This is a flower, and this is a flower. This part only has male parts. It produces pollen. So the male part of the plant is here, and then there's another flower down here, which in corn we call the ear, and that has all female parts. So the plant has both male and female parts, but they're in different locations, one up here, one down here. So monoecious, one plant, male and female parts in different locations. It's imperfect because they're not right next to each other. For the other type of imperfect plant uh, flowers is dioecious. Dioecious, we can think di, meaning two. These types of plants have a whole plant that is, has many different flowers, and all of them only have female parts. And another plant, individual, will have many different flowers, but they all only have male parts. That means that if you want reproduction to occur, you'll need two different plants, one being male and one being female. People often worry about this, but most plants are not dioecious but there are some that do grow in your garden. An example, as pictured here, is holly and also ginkgo trees. This flower has only female parts, and this flower only has male parts. This is a dioecious plant, meaning that the whole plant has all female flowers, or another individual plant has all male flowers. So you need two for reproduction. So, quick review, perfect flowers have both male and female parts in the same flower. Imperfect plants do not have this. They have either monoecious, which meaning male and female parts at different locations of the plant, or dioecious, meaning you have two separate plants. Let's go over the specific parts of the male and female plants. Parts. So, first we'll go over the male parts, which are called stamens. Stamens has two main parts. The filament, which is this apparatus that holds the anther. On the anther, you'll have individual pollen grains. On this plant next to me, I'll show you what I mean by this. I have this filament that has this thing on it. That is the anther. So this is the filament and this is the anther. As far as the um, female parts go, this is the female part of the plant and this is called a pistil. You can remember that it's called a pistil because if you look at the shape, it kind of looks like the shape of a pistil or a gun. This is the female part of the plant. At the top we have the stigma, then we have the style, and then at the base we have the ovary. The stigma is where the pollen lands. I remember it because in most plants it's sticky. I remember sticky stigma, then the style, and then the ovary. 
Inside the ovary, there are ovules. Let's go to the next slide to make sure we're not missing anything. In addition to these parts that we just covered, we also have the petal of the flower, the sepal, which is this modified leaf, and what we call the peduncle. Isn't that a fun word? The peduncle is what attaches the flower to the rest of the plant. We'll review these. This is called the pistil. At the top we have the stigma, then the style, then the ovary, and inside the ovary we have the ovule. Then we have the male part of the plant, which is called the stamen. The two parts of a stamen are the anther, the pollen is, and the filament. Flower petals are very important for plants being successful in their reproduction. Petals attract insects, which transfer pollen to the female parts. They also shield the pistil and stamens from weather. Before the flower opens, the petals are the protection for those immature flower parts while they develop. Then once they open, those beautiful petals will attract pollinators. Petals are not only gorgeous, but they're very important biologically. Let's go through how plant reproduction actually occurs. So again, we have all of our parts that we already learned labeled here. Here is our female part of the plant zoomed in to be larger, and then the male filament holding up the anther. On that anther, there's individual pollen grains. Once that pollen grain, maybe from a pollinator, such as a bee, or by the wind, it gets on the female part, it gets to this stigma, which is sticky, so it adheres. Once the pollen grain adheres to the stigma, a pollen tube grows from the pollen grain to the ovule. So it grows from up here all the way to down here. Then two sperm nuclei pass through the pollen tube. One unites with the egg in the nucleus of this ovule, and the other unites with these two nuclei over here. The one that unites with the egg in the nucleus produces a zygote, which is the baby plant. The other sperm nucleus unites with these two polar uh, nuclei, and that forms the endosperm. The fertilized ovule develops into a seed, which then can grow into a seedling. The endosperm also develops, becoming the endosperm, which feeds that seedling as it germinates. So when a seed germinates, it really is just relying on all the nutrients that the mother plant gave it. The way that that mother plant gives the nutrients to that seed is through the endosperm. So as that seed is um, coming, that, that, that seedling is coming out of the seed, it's germinating, it doesn't have any support it can't photosynthesize, it can't get its own nutrients um, through photosynthesis, it, can't, it doesn't have roots yet or developed roots to get nutrients, it has to rely on that energy from the endosperm. So that endosperm is incredibly important for plant reproduction. So a little review, we have the pollen grain landing on the stigma, we have um, this fertilization pollination occurring here, and then we have the seed development. We went through the easiest example to identify the different parts because they're usually larger on a lily plant. But all different plants have different flower shapes, sizes, and colors. And if you look carefully and you have a trained eye, you can find all the parts that we discussed on these different flowers. These are two examples of different flower shapes, but you can see that we still have all the different parts that we learned labeled. They are just in different configuration and organization. There's some names for different flower organizations. I'm just giving you three examples. Um, one is a head, such as in a daisy. And then another example, which is in gladiola, is a spike. So we have one flower spike with many different florets. And in onion, these different florets are arranged in an umbel shape. Here is a pretty flower that I saw while traveling in Boston, and it is in the onion family. You can see these giant umbel-shaped florets in arrangement to make a beautiful flower. 
I hope today was helpful for you understanding the different flower parts and their function, along with plant reproduction. I encourage you to take time to do your own dissection of a flower. The easiest is a lily. Try to find all the parts that we talked about today and label them yourself. For finding the ovules, you'll need to cut open the ovary of the flower to see the ovules inside. You'll also note that you'll see the pollen st stuck to your fingers, so be careful to uh, wear clothes that you don't mind getting dirty, or be very careful with not touching things around you. I hope you enjoyed today. Please comment with any questions and feel free to email me. Have a lovely day.